Miami, Florida, December 21st, 2013. A robot named Chimp is now beginning his second day of competition in the DARPA Robotics Challenge Trials. He currently stands in a four-way tie for ninth place in a competition in which the eight teams with the highest point totals will receive $1 million each to compete in the finals in 2014, and ninth and below get nothing. CMU NREX Tartan Rescue Team, who created it, will be competing as well. A year or so earlier, no one on the team had any experience in humanoid robotics, and no one had dreamed of either the team or Chimp. Some believe making the dream of robotics real is today's great technological challenge. We expect the current DARPA Robotics Challenge trials to show us the current state of the art. We're measuring where things are now. We know that robots are slow. We know that they are somewhat unsteady on their feet. We think that they're about the same stage of competence as a one-year-old child in terms of their locomotion competence and also their ability to grasp things. What we really want to do is establish a reference point so that a year from now we can see how far we can get. So if we're successful, it means that these robots are actually going to be able to make a difference, in particular in disaster scenarios, making society more resilient. We decided to enter the challenge because we felt like disaster response was an important application to address. We also were very interested in the technology involved, namely mobile manipulation. We felt that was very important to NREC and the types of applications we pursue. What this competition's about is developing human-like grasping, for example. That alone opens up all kinds of applications in warehousing, uh, material handling, maintenance. Carnegie Mellon's Tartan Racing Team was victorious in an earlier DARPA robot competition, the 2007 Urban Challenge Autonomous Navigation Road Race. Tartan Racing set a high standard for all of us. We are seeing the payoff from the Urban Challenge now as more car makers are installing driving assistance and collision avoidance systems. If the Robotics Challenge can have that kind of effect on disaster response, all of society will benefit. But the Robotics Challenge is a much bigger task for the National Robotics Engineering Center. INREC is the leader in autonomous navigation, but it had no experience at all in humanoid robotics and decided to choose Track A, requiring it to develop both the system and the software, instead of taking the software only Track B option. We wanted to avoid the problem of balancing while walking. So in December 2012, INREC had to assemble a team of humanoid robotics novices which could design, manufacture, build, and program a robot from scratch in a year to compete with teams which in some cases had been developing humanoid robots for more than a decade. We were awarded in October but really didn't start until December. That was a big challenge, the, the short time frame. We fail fast. We try things quickly. The team decided that existing off-the-shelf geared motors would not be good enough for CHIMP, so they designed their own better ones. Certainly they're better, right? Um, of course that's what I say. But they are higher performance, they are stronger per kilogram, they, are, um, they have more torque per volume. CHIMP was fully assembled in the beginning of November, leaving less than six weeks to get him to perform the tasks he would be judged on. The software team was just working continuously, day and night, getting every single ounce we could get out of utility on that robot. And the clock was ticking. Ready or not, on December 14, 2013, the team had to pack the robot and everything else they would need to drive to the competition. Day one, all of the tasks that we had put at the end of our priority list, down to the vehicle task, which we weren't even going to attempt, were our first day. We didn't have the full mobile robot until just about six weeks before the challenge, so it dramatically limited our ability to develop for the mobility tasks. So we go into the contest with a very low score, it was two points in fact. And my biggest worry was that something uh, would go wrong in one of the subsystems that would prevent us from getting any points whatsoever, so it, it's uh, a pretty complex system that requires perception and positioning and communications and fundamental software to be working under the hood that you don't even think of until it actually stops working. And it really only takes one or two of those things to start malfunctioning and the robot's useless. So a year of work by the team to create a robot out of thin air that could compete successfully had come down to this. 
Champ removed the first five pieces of debris as planned, but with 6.15 to go, while trying to remove the ninth piece of debris, Chimp caught it on a beam and dropped it. When he dropped the debris, it was a head and hands moment, and now you were feeling the butterflies and watching the clock. Can they get it? Can they get it? Can they get it? And this robot is somewhat autonomous. The operators tell it what to do and then it does it. You're hoping that they chose the right you're, you're just, you're, you don't see the operators, you have no communications with them. So it's, it, this is your baby, you're just, you're up there, you're rooting for it, and it drops the ball, you know, it's the pop-up and it misses it. Um, it was tense, it was exciting. I think our execution on the wall task was one of the perfect examples of what our software is able to do. Uh, we were faced with the task of designing and building a robot at the same time we were writing the software. So the way we did it was we started both activities in parallel. We used uh, simulators and surrogate hardware in order to develop and test the software. And then when the robot itself was ready, we staged the software components uh, on the chimp and then tested the integrated system. For the wall task, it, it comes down to you needing to prescribe a very specific motion. So you have to cut out this triangle of drywall while staying within the lines. I think a lot of other teams chose to, to treat it like a video game and they were just using a joystick to sort of tell it how to go around. Uh, the problem is that your robot's moving around a little and, and it's not always intuitive to understand just using a camera where the hand is, so you end up with these really choppy cuts. Um, in comparison, we had a great platform that could maintain a position, move in straight lines and so forth, and that allowed us to essentially get within centimeters of the exact straight center line. <laughs> We've brought home the triangle, we intend to frame it. It's a, a great testament to engineering. I will be thrilled if the best team even gets half the points, but I'll also be thrilled if they get a quarter of the points. The Tartan rescue team gained 18 out of 32 possible points, finishing third. Number three. Tartan Rescue. Making it one of eight teams to become a finalist in the competition and win one million dollars in funding. It was second among track A teams, meaning that from not even a sketch of a robot 20 months before, it was now the second best robot in the world as far as its competition was concerned. Well, I mean, these guys never cease to amaze me in terms of what they can pull off. I've worked here for a very long time, and um, the fact that they designed uh, a robot of this complexity uh, and capability in less than a year is absolutely stunning. In this case, our vendors, our sponsors, the folks we work with outside of this place all had to perform, and that was a risk, and they did perform. We were really concerned about that. But fortunately, they were, they were aces. <laughs>